Hi everyone, it's me, Tim, and today I want to talk about design by committee versus design by collaboration. In fact, I want to answer a question by CyberCop0083, who asks, You are critical of games by committee. Can you draw an approximate line between a committee product and a collaborative one? Yes. Yes, I can. And yes, I am very critical of design by committee because I've never, I've never seen a committee make a good product. Um, and I'm not even talking games, but every good group that I've worked in, they've done better when it's collaboration versus committee. And let me talk about what I mean by that. By collaboration, I mean a bunch of people will work on one feature of the game. Maybe they're a strike team. Maybe it's just a, a loose affiliation of people on the bigger team who are all working on some product feature that needs some code and some art and some design. They all give their input. The final decision of that feature is made by the lead or the leads involved. And sometimes by someone above them, like if a tie needs to be broken or a feature goes in that people are like, I don't really think this fits. Usually there's one person in charge of the whole project. It used to be called project lead. Now it's often called game director or project director. That person will step in and make that final decision or break ties or whatever. Let's contrast this to a game, guy, a game being made by committee which is again, many people are working on a feature because it needs work from several people. And then any decisions are decided by vote. That on the surface, that sounds awesome. But historically I've discovered literally by doing it both ways that the committee way is always worse. And it basically boils down to in this case, democracy doesn't work. And let me explain why. The first problem I see is that themes tend to get lost when you have a committee designed game. And by that I mean you end up with a bunch of inconsistent features. Um, you may end up with, you know, the person who made crafting loved crafting so much that all the best items come from crafting. And so now there's really no reason to ever use a dropped weapon or a quest reward weapon because the best weapons all are made with crafting. It wasn't intended to be done that way. Um, or if there's a theme like these two things will never mix, like take Arcanum. If Arcanum was made by a committee, you'd probably see lots of subquests where someone figured out how to mix magic and tech, even though the game and the manual and everything leads you to believe that magic and tech are antithetical. They can't mix. It's kind of the whole point of the setting and the story. And when you learn about history of the countries and powers in Arcanum, deciding to throw in something like, here's a magic gun, kind of throws all that into disarray. So... When you end up with people who can vote things on to a game, you frequently find that consistency among the features isn't often considered, which leads me to my second problem. If you look at ideas for the game and, and look at them individually, they can be really good ideas, but maybe they're not good for the game. And I remember this was something that came up when I made the first Carbine setting. The setting was, it was the center of the multiverse and different multiverses were popping into existence on this one planet that was at the center. It was at coordinate zero, zero, zero in every multiverse. So things could break through there from other multiverses. But that meant you could have robots and dragons and, you know, cyber implants and you know gods it was weird and as someone pointed out to me since everything can go in here nothing 
really belongs here. And it's not that any one of those ideas are bad. It's just they don't all fit together. If you remember when I talked about how I put together designs, I said I always do setting followed by story followed by mechanics. And the reason I do that way is we decide on the setting first. And then you stick a pin in that. So made Fallout, it's post-apocalyptic. You put a pin in that. Then you come up with the story. Well, we want the story to be something that you can tell in a post-apocalyptic setting. The main story, at least. And it would be dumb to pick something that doesn't have anything to do with the setting. Because that's what people are there for. Then you make mechanics that support both your story and your setting. So mechanics, you know, it made sense to have radiation and poison and have lots of gun skills and combat skills. But because we also said, hey, we're going to play through multiple ways, you know, talking skill and stealth skills. If you went with a committee, you might have ended up with uh, just all combat skills. You might end up with something that people are like, well, we really thought these were really cool and... No, uh, the dialogue stuff was dumb. So enough people didn't support dialogue, so it never ended up as a possible way of solving any quests. And I will tell you, there were frequently times where people came up with a really good quest. And I said, well, wait, you didn't put in a stealth path or a talking path. It's just combat. And I remind them that this is one of the main story art quests. So they, they had an option, either... It gets kicked out or it gets relegated to a side quest and they still have to make a main story quest for that one that involves all three. So we had things like that that I was just the final say in. And because I couldn't be overridden, it made people make all the story arcs having at least three ways of getting through it. The biggest problem I've ever seen in, in committee-made games, the biggest one is loudness. You end up with the loudest person on the team gets the most of their ideas into the game. And this is where, you know, it's extrovert versus introvert. I know introverts hate this where they go to a meeting and one person, one or two people are dominating it and they feel like they can't get anything in edgewise. And this is why I always say that accommodation has to go both ways. I try to get people who aren't talking to talk, but if they won't talk and I've tried to get them to talk, hey, you have to meet me halfway here. I will shut down the person who's dominating the meeting but you have to say something. Or you can read the minutes of the meeting and send me your idea in an email. So the loudness is a problem because, interestingly, if I listen to loudness here by like what people really clamor for, all my videos would be tech videos, code and tech of how I made RPGs. Even though when I post those videos, they are the least watched. In other words, the people who are the loudest at asking for they want what they want are a minority. What people really seem to come here for are high-level descriptions of how to make games, stories of games being made, and as much code stuff as design stuff and um, process on how games are made. So that's a, that's an interesting example right there is I... I can't just make nothing but code and tech stuff. Besides, there's a bunch of channels that do code. There's literally thousands of channels out there that show you how to code in C Sharp for Unity. I don't need to do that here. I have so much other experience in different things. I should do something different. There's people who are coding in C Sharp and Unity every day. They should be probably be teaching you those classes. Similarly, there are other traits that happen on committees that I've watched override the committee and get things into the game that probably shouldn't. Things like charismatic people. They convince everybody their idea is best. Even when you put it in, remember talked about fast fail and rapid prototyping, you put it in, it doesn't work. This is where it should get kicked out. But they're like, no, no, let's keep let's keep changing it. Let's change it. Let's change it. Let's change it. And they keep fiddling with it and waste a ton of time. You need to have someone go, boom, we're out. Persistence is another thing that you, people just keep bringing up an idea in a meeting. They go, like, hey, why don't, we, why don't we try this? We should really try this. I saw this in a game. We should really do this. And so sometimes people are just broken down and go, fine, we're put in that feature. This is really close to another thing I've seen happen in committees where people will just be really annoying, like deliberately annoying, just so somebody will say, fine, we're putting your idea, so they just 
shut up. And I've seen that work. And I've even went to somebody after me once. You were deliberately annoying in there, right? Well, I got my feature in. And I was like, whoa. And then this goes to another one, which is sort of the opposite end of the spectrum. I've seen someone suggest a feature that was bad. And when it got shot down, he said, you guys never let me put in any of my ideas. I haven't had an idea put in this game for months. And then out of this misguided sense of fairness, this bad feature is put in because you feel bad for the person and you want to be fair. I've done this. I've actually let features go into my games that I didn't really like. But I realized that the person who was suggesting it hadn't had an idea go in the game at all. So it's hard to be that benevolent dictator. But that kind of sense of fairness comes up in committees all the time. Basically what all this boils down to is a committee is just a form of a mob. And you really don't want mob rule in a game. Um, all those things I mentioned, loudness, charisma, persistence, annoyingness, sense of fairness, all these lead to designs going in that shouldn't. And if I could sum all this up in one sentence, games by committee tend to have their vision diluted. You've probably played games that were like, well, that was okay, that was interesting, but it was nothing memorable. That game probably had a committee or an inexperienced project lead. Because usually if one person is in charge of it, everything kind of goes in and lines up with what they want. It might not be a good vision, but it's a vision. I'm In committee-made games, I often see the vision as this generic, well, it's kind of a fantasy game and we go around and do fantasy quests and get money and treasure and we go up and we get new abilities and then we beat up more fantasy monsters. Okay, I've seen those games in development. Yikes, there's really just no strong vision there because it's being made by a whole bunch of people. Maybe they're being too nice and they're not trying to make their vision step forward. Or maybe because it's a committee, they're putting in a mix of things from everybody and it becomes a hodgepodge of features and themes. But that is my distinction, CyberCop 0083, between a committee-made game and a collaboratively made game. So I hope that answers your question.